What is going on everybody? It's a beautiful day today here at Siesta Key Beach and we just found this beautiful renegade and the owners of this coach have been RVing for over 30 years, have had eight different RVs. So today I'm really excited to introduce you to Jim and Shelly. Good to see you, Andrew. Likewise, mm -hmm. you guys have some stories and have been RVing for quite some time, but what's the story on this coach here? Well, we've had five renegades. So we've been with a renegade family, we call it, because we live right up near a lot of the workers and so forth. We've had five renegades over 20 years before we started out with um, bumper poles and fifth wheels. And then this one's, um, because of our passion for renegade, kind of unique, because it is the 25th anniversary. I mm -hmm. really like your style the way you're using your renegade to hang out at mm -hmm. the beach today here and I want to ask you some more questions about how you use the coach some of your experience you think you could uh, show us inside and we could sit down Absolutely. and now talk yep let's cool. go you bet. sounds good This is a beautiful coach. I'm really impressed. I'm seeing some bunks back there, and I think you've got two full bathrooms, but yep. you want to show us around a little bit? What's yeah. uh, going on I, here? Kind of showy's deal there. So when we picked our coach up, it did have a couch here. We wanted to do the two chairs that are electric. So you've got outlets, you've got lights. This does fold down into a bed if you want it to. Right now for us, while we're traveling, this put our shoes and miscellaneous in here instead of the bed because we know our grandkids are not going to be with us. Part of our favorite thing is just being able to be in here. I'm having a, a big refrigerator freezer with an ice maker is awesome. We have a washer and dryer. So when you're on the road, you can do what you need to do not have to go to the laundromat. This time we chose bunks because we have five grandkids under the age of five. For that, we also have a full bath for them to use with a shower. I love the bunk model, but I've got to ask you, have you had these mattresses replaced for Brooklyn bedding mattresses yet? Right now, our grandkids are five and under. So for them, it works fine. Later on when they get bigger, I suppose we'll probably have to do something a little better for them. I've got to tell you about my good friends at Brooklyn bedding RV mattress Com. If you ever do want to upgrade these mattresses, they do have all different sizes that will fit RV Kings, bunk models. They make high quality mattresses. They have a 120 night sleep trial, a 10 year warranty, free shipping, and they ship it right to you in a box where it's easy to unload. And they are the 2023 Good Housekeeping Family Travel Award winner. Now I've got to ask the original mattress. I know you're very happy with Renegade and we're gonna talk a lot more of why you chose a Renegade. I know this is an expensive motorhome, but even the expensive motorhomes don't always come with the best mattress. Do you think this mattress could use an upgrade at all? I suppose it will. The more you sleep on it, of course, it's not going to last as long as a better mattress that we have at home. So there's probably an upgrade available soon. Well, I've got to let you know, I can get you a 25% discount at rvmattress.com using the coupon code Andrew Steele. So when you're ready to get some new mattresses yep. for your bunks or your coach, or even for your home as well, brooklynbeddingrvmattress.com has you covered. And we really appreciate them sponsoring today's yep. video. But coming back to the coach here, I'm curious why you chose a Super C motorhome. You said you had some fifth wheels, bumper poles. What was your reasoning for choosing the Super C? I think it started with my passion for trucks. From the time I was a young boy, I always kind of envied trucks and looked at them and liked to follow them and so forth. And then we got into agriculture as adults and young married uh, couple. Had trucks in our agricultural business and then we had a trucking business and then ultimately we ended up selling semi trucks so when i'm talking about trucks class 8 chassis that our renegade and many of the super c's are built on you know a business class truck or a class 8 truck so that's kind of what drove it and shelly was behind me on that and the drivability and safety of the chassis with a motor out front is something that you hear everybody talk about all the time and it's real and then the stability of the ride and the wind and so forth so a lot of things just kept coming together and fit us perfectly and with your background mm -hmm. in trucking i know that there's a lot of people out there that the term super c can be debated on yeah. what really is a Super C. What is it about this rig that other, you know, alleged Super Cs Correct. are? What's the difference yeah. between the two machines? This, you know, I keep using the word Class A, which is a commercial over the road, 80,000 GVW chassis that's meant to go hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles. Now, also they have like the M2s are real popular on the what they call a Super C, but that's more of what you'd call a business class truck with a much smaller motor. They call these big bore motors and 
those are a smaller six cylinder motor and meant to go hundreds of thousands of miles but not as smooth of a ride not as powerful of a chassis not as heavy of a chassis so there's kind of different categories that don't get separated in my opinion in the super c world yeah that definitely can be debated and this floor plan in the renegade is what i think is the best floor plan not just in the super c's but all motorhomes. You've got the two full bathrooms with a second shower here. We'll uh, give everybody a quick sneak preview here. You'd see a good amount of space there in the half bathroom. Now, was there a reason that you chose this particular bunk floor plan with the two full baths? Boss said that's one we're getting yeah. for the grandkids. Yeah, with grandkids, you don't want yeah. them running back and forth. It's easier when you're driving. You'll have a bathroom right there. Everything's tile. You can get to it quick, easy without a mess. Now you're running the generator too or no? Right now, um, the as I just was telling you, Andrew, the middle air conditioner on the XL is uh, hooked up to one of our two inverters. And we have AGM batteries. So it did just start and uh, my good friend, Jeff Swartz, one of the Renegators, helped me put a easy starts, I believe is the right terminology for the air conditioner. So we just commented on how quiet it was. Yeah, and it's really cool. You know, this is technology that you know, a lot of people think that you need lithium <laughs> batteries just to run AC unit off of the inverter. But this is actually a technology that's been around for yep. a long time and, and works extremely well. We can see on the touch panel here, yep. the generator is not on right now. Yep. No lithium batteries. We're still running an AC. Very cool. And the reason these other two are shedding right now is I didn't turn the thermostats down and we just shut the generator down. So these two are not able to run because there's no shore power or generator power. Your batteries run in the middle of AC unit, as I said. And then we have solar, and I'm not a real big solar geek, so I, people can talk around me, but we have three panels and that'll keep up with the air conditioner on most days, you know, unless it's uh, atrociously hot, then you, you might need the generator. And you can obviously set that on auto start when the amps drop down. Now, before that uh, AC kicked on, we were talking about the Renegade and kind of the Renegade owners group. And back out here in the, in the living yeah. room, on the dining room table here, I noticed you've got some really cool literature here. Some of the stuff that you've kind of kept showing the Renegade family, some of the stuff going on here. Can you tell us a little bit more about Renegade ownership experience? Yeah, it's, it's been, like we keep saying, about a 20 year ordeal for Shelly and I in Renegade. At this point, we're in 2024, so they've been around about 27 years, going on 27 years. Here is the founder, uh, one of the founders, Chuck McKibben. It's, it's fun, I guess I'm just gonna talk about a few names. His um, son, which is involved with Sport Truck, out in Chandler, Arizona, is, is right there. So he was basically just, a teenager at this point in the early 2000s or a young 20s maybe he's still with the industry I should say and involved in renegade probably like a half a dozen people that are in this picture that have oh, been sweet. there 20 20 plus years I believe Scott he's in parts maybe one of the oldest employees he has been there longer than it was technically called renegade and I could go on and on Willie and Kenny in service and have been Merv. there yeah Merv uh, Miller one of the general the general plant manager I believe is his title super Super devoted guy. He's a key player. Furlan Fry has been there around 19 years. I think he told me he's plant one manager. On and on, it's just fun. Um, when we go down there, since we're so close to the factory, um, they know you by name and quality and integrity is super important. Now, Renegade is very well known in the racing industry. I think you've got a 40,000 pound towing capacity on this. The hitch itself, I believe, will, will tow 40,000 pounds and then it's limited by whatever your ball is. I think if you do a panel hitch, you can probably we get to 40 and then a ball hitch up to 30,000. A real you know semi truck you know, piece Absolutely. of equipment. A lot of hauling capacity but you were talking about the owners groups and you were saying between 80 and 120 yep. Renegades meet up. Have yep. you been to any of those rallies? Yep. We started in the fall of 22, right? Going yeah. to the first one and we yeah. missed two other rallies. Yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah, so in November of 22, we went to Tennessee and that was our first rally. And you get to meet a lot of people because you're doing seminars with them, you're doing dinner with them, you're having picnics at their places, whoever is in your row. You All learn- All like-minded people. It's really, really fun. Kyle McKibben, as I mentioned earlier, works for Sport Truck out of Chandler, Arizona. Or they're the our, main sponsor. Yeah, they're one of our big and sponsors. Jeff and Julie Swartz are getting to be really well known in the, the group. They basically have taken over and spearheaded it now as leaders and very good at that and doing some other things to grow the Renegade family. We've made some really close friends. In fact, one of the couples is going to be here later today to meet us that we've only known for a year and a half yeah. now or whatever. They're like family to us. And it's yeah. fun traveling. We went to South Dakota to a rally. 
and took a month and saw a lot of things on the way out there. And then everybody's like, hey, did you get something new in your coach? What did you do? And, yeah. you know, so it's sort of a, a, a fun time. Real humble, hard work and grow. Yeah, definitely some amazing people in the RV industry yeah. and, and all aspects of it. And I want to ask you a little bit more about how you use the coach, because, you know, we're talking about you're in rallies in South Dakota and Tennessee, but here you're at the beach in Florida meeting up with some other renegade owners. What are your favorite ways to use this coach? And then I also want to ask, how did you get this huge motorhome down here to the beach when parking is really hard to get? Yeah. Go so on. for us, when we built our first Renegade, it was to get away from the weather in Michigan, come down, visit my folks in Florida. We would have our kids. Sometimes we had extra kids. Then it's going to Silver Lake, Michigan, where we play on the dunes. We've been doing that for 40 years. The funny part of having a Renegade is when you have something that is unique, and our first one was just white, people would say, what? What is that and and can I see inside so you make friends really quick because everybody wants to know what it is what does it look like inside they can't imagine it looks like a box yet it looks like your house inside yep. so and then as far as getting around it's um I have never had a class A as I mentioned earlier it's it's much firmer stable right firmer in a good way feeling safe turn and radius is different because the axle is in front of you where instead of in a class A you're usually sitting in front of the tires so you got to plan your turns ahead of time but once you get that figured out there is a small learning curve with a 45 foot we had a 36 foot that is that is pretty unique on the m2 chassis that's kind of like driving a big dually pickup it's pretty amazing how well that gets around we've got many uh wives in the group that drive their 45 like it's their pickup so um, while you know, they're while they're towing something yeah, most of the time they get used to it quite quickly always learning and you mentioned you had the other renegade on the m2 chassis versus this mm -hmm. on the class 8 chassis what were the big differences that you noticed from an end user perspective between yeah. those two the cab is a lot quieter in the, the the bigger you know class 8 that we keep calling it you know the which would be the classic and the xl and the renegade line the cab is just a tighter fitting cab a larger bore motor is what we called it earlier higher horsepower and so forth and this thing's got an Allison automatic in it and 600 horse and 1850 torque it's like a rocket ship when you take off at a stoplight which that's kind of fun and then our M2 was very very fast in city driving and stuff but struggled a little more in big hills but pretty impressive for the amount of weight it was pulling and then we've kind of gone back and forth we did have a 45 foot classic and that was on a Kenworth back in 07 we had a classic before that also on a smaller chassis so we've, we've had two smaller chassis and two class 8 chassis getting to this level of a super C motorhome renegade is known as being at the top of the line of the production super C's mm -hmm. is there a reason that you chose the renegade over other companies out there well, it started probably by happenstance. The first one was a classic on a T300 Kenworth, which is more of a business class truck. I was a younger guy then and didn't know quite as much as I know now about the trucking industry. We started with Renegade and, I mean, the cabinets and everything are built like it's a home, you know, high quality hardwood home. So it just sold us on it. And um, resale value is unreal. We've had three very, very good experiences on selling our Renegades to get the next Renegade and it made the next step extremely easy. My wife gets after me a little bit that I brag too much for the quality and the resale value, but um, it's amazing. It helps you get to the next step a lot easier. And I think you know what it's like for some people if they buy the wrong motorhome, resale value can really get you in trouble. That's a true story, yes mm -hmm. sir. Now you also mentioned before we turned the camera on that you swayed away for a little while and went back to a fifth wheel but then came back to the Renegade. What, what was the reasoning for that? And then what was the reasoning for coming back? I think we were starting to look at retirement and we were just about getting to a financial position that we wanted to be in to retire. We jumped out of it and took that equity to get things in order for retirement. And then we were blessed with some good years. My drive um, started asking to get back into it. I really missed it. Get a picture of the Renegade going down the driveway the day I sold it and it's a sad day. He said it had never been in snow. So he almost <laughs> cried. We started back again with the fifth wheel and we just realized yeah. that wasn't what we wanted we wanted to be able to have go everything back. in one spot when you're driving if he needs yeah. something I can get it you don't have to stop the truck you don't have to unhook you can just go get in and go and we're very thankful we don't want to come across that you know anyone owes us this kind of quality and 
right and everything. And on that note, I think it's important to remember um, we were at the Ships Moana rally and um, there was a couple right next to us, the retired couple, in a, probably a 25-year-old Dodge diesel pickup in beautiful shape and a 20-year-old fifth wheel and stuff. And they complimented on how nice the Renegade group was. Humble, down-to-earth people. So there might be people in that group that are driving, you know, several hundred thousand dollar Renegades, but they're they're really nice people. Yes, sir. You definitely can never judge a book by no. its cover because no. some of those uh, old boys in overalls out there, some of those yeah. farmers can uh, yeah. could buy a lot of Prevo buses, but a lot of them are driving around in these as well. And now we also saw a couple kind of historic memorabilia that you have uh, that really proves that you were Renegade owners about 20 <laughs> years ago that I want to show everyone in a moment. But before we take a look at those, I've got to ask, uh, in 30 years of RVing, are there any stories that really stand out as your wildest or crazy? craziest story. What happens when you're traveling in a motorhome in a traffic jam? We had a couple extra kids, so now we have five girls in the camper. They're watching TV. They're getting bored. They're like, what are we going to do? So they start making little signs and putting them out the window to people. So, hey, nice car, nice dog. People would just sort of wave and honk. So during the traffic jam, all of a sudden we see this. Starting to get some notes coming back at us. So we, we pull up and the same car that they said, hey, nice car, the guy has a napkin and it says, hey, nice house. <laughs> so of course, you know, that's always a fun one because the kids are like, hey, did you guys see that? They think we got a nice house, you know? And it's it's just a fun experience if you ask yeah, our kids. kids remember that. 25 Probably years most of their fun times are taking this to the fair when they go to show their animals, taking it to Silver Lake. Their friends are always there. Yeah. It's Vacation just, starts the, day, the second you leave in a motorhome versus pulling a trailer. It's, you know, a little bit of the destination before you really relax, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I've never yeah. really thought about it that yeah. way, uh, especially traveling in a big group like that. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of fun memories now. Were there any uh, struggling moments or big learning moments? I think I've ran out of fuel one time in my life in any vehicle and it was in our classic. four classic yeah he said you know i said hey you need fuel remember yeah yeah oh, yeah, yeah i, I got it, it. I'm, I'm gonna go to this next station the girls come running from the back saying um the tv just shut off and he says oh no so i knew the generator quit so i knew that was a warning sign immediately i knew i was in trouble so trying to speed the story up we ended up in the middle of an intersection in tennessee and the nicest guy in a chevy half ton pickup pulled our big old 30 some thousand pound motorhome to the fuel station and there's a little more to the story but that's the gist of it so it never happened again after no after no we I've are we are very faithful sense. very Good. faithful about looking yeah. for a fuel stop yeah so, lesson learned so yes hopefully some viewers out there we'll uh, <laughs> yeah. make sure they fuel up in time. Now, should, should you think we can take a little, little look more around? I, I want to ask you lots of questions, but yeah. can we uh, look a little more around the coach here? So we have an uh, inverter stove. We have a convection microwave, so you can do whatever you need to do. We do not have an oven, so the convection works fine for that. We have storage under here. Our guys at Double L who have made all the cabinets for Renegade. Then you slide in here for me because you just can never have enough room when you have a house. Then you come in here and you're trying to visualize where everything should go. So we have a lot of cabinet space, just big cabinets that you can put shelves in. You can have them do more slide outs. We have a full pantry here with slide outs, slide individual out drawers. Most of the people who work there have been there for a long time and it's quality. It's heavy. It's going to be like your house. So what you have at home is what you usually get in here. So we're sort of used to that. We have storage for our grandkids stuff when they're here. Now, before we see the bedroom, I've got to ask, I noticed there's no bunk here. I've seen some renegades that have more of a bunk yep. set up here. Was there a reason that you designed this front cab area this so, way? So as I said, we've had two classics in a classic and in, in the past, uh, only had the bunk over. So um, you'd have about a straight line right across here and a bed in front of the bunk. No aero cap is what I call it. If you look at the exterior of this, it's aerodynamic like a semi truck would be. So the XL, which is what this is, only has this design where okay. you can walk right in, step down and set in the seat. No bunk. The classic, you can get both ways. You can actually get the same aero cap on it or the, like you're thinking about, the bunk over. So that's the biggest difference. There's a little more wind noise. I strongly believe in the, the classic with the uh, bunk over, but it's a big benefit. Like we're tying up room with uh, bunk beds back there and it's a big, it's it's over 80 inches long if you don't want to put a cabinet in the end of it. You can sleep two adults up there. So that's, that's the quick analysis. And then they, they make one classic that's kind of a hybrid in between 
it has the bunk over, and then it has a section that, that you can lift up to give you um, access to the cab easier. Yeah, this is really nice though, just having that real really easy like access. Yeah, yeah. I, I would never want to go back. Um, it'd be nice to have that room, but I like how open it feels. A little bit of a Class A feel and a Class Super C. And then you've probably heard many people talk about the cab is similar to driving your pickup, you know? A lot of the guys on YouTube that are talking about these Super C's, it's, it's the same feeling, you know? Your axle's in front of you, um, your mirrors are in the same position, the dash is somewhat similar, and the quietness of these is unreal. And this has got the X15 in it? This is a Detroit oh. uh, 16 liter. Okay. 16 liter, 600 horse, 1850 torque. Okay, is that the DD13? It's a DD16. DD16. You can get in the, in the XL, the Classic, and the Explorer, which that is limited to 525 horse. Okay. And I do believe the same torque, though, 1850. And the hood is a little shorter, and it's just a 13 liter motor instead of a 16. Do you know of only the Detroit diesels available in this, or do they in have the Cummins as well? In a Cascadia. Well? This is a Freightliner Cascadia. I don't think a Cummins is even available on a Cascadia, for sure not through Renegade. They're Detroit is owned by Daimler Benz, so that's yep. that's the marriage there. And this is an Allison auto, six speed automatic, and then you can get a Detroit built 12 speed automatic. And that's a little better for heavy towing, but if you want to beat everybody at the stoplight, the Allison's better. The seats swivel around. Now, how how often do you turn the seats around not and use too them? Not often, we yeah. honestly don't. It's no. not real cumbersome to do it, I mean, it's a, it's probably a five minute job to do them both, but we don't we don't do it a whole lot. When we were like at a rally and yeah. we have a bunch of people in here, it's nice because then everybody can still be in the same area. Uh, appreciate you sharing the uh, the business facts with us, but I want to show everybody the, that memorabilia from about 20 years ago. Uh, can we take a look at that? Yeah. You cannot fake this, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This is the real deal. You gotta you gotta put in some years to still have these. So what what are these older T-shirts that we're seeing here? I, I'm sure the roughly the era is. 2002 to 2005, I think this is a newer one here. This shows their heritage, Dominate, and it shows their heritage. And stackers being pulled behind this is technically called a toter home mm -hmm. with the fifth wheel hitch in the back. And the, the old Renegade people recognize the flame and some names. This is just prior to some names that some of us will remember. Um, American Chopper and Paul Sr. Oh yeah. He had a Renegade in a big trailer about like I just showed you there. And that was um, being built, I think, right about the time our one of our first two Renegade classics. Very and, cool. I um, heard some stories about Paul Sr. Any stories that you could share with us? I asked one guy at the plant if he was as grumpy in person as he is on TV and they said worse. I don't know how true that is. Probably everybody wanted to joke about that at the time, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very cool that you've hung on to those for so long. And Back here in the <clears> rear <throat> bedroom here, a lot of headroom. That's one thing about these Super C motorhomes that I really like is the amount of headroom. It's funny you say that, Andrew. This is a 2022 and in 2024 Four. they um, reworked the XL and dropped the Icon line. They raised it, I think it's eight inches. I don't regret not having the newer. I mean, it's always nice to have the newest, greatest, best thing. One thing about this, it's a little more aerodynamic, in my opinion, and I'm getting around you know, suburbs like this and stuff, but that extra eight inches, can you imagine how that would feel? Absolutely. I've been in them, and they're, they're nearly, I think they're 90 inches. And you're braver than I, bringing this monster yeah. down to the beach here, one of the busiest parking lots in the United States. Yeah, so, do it at the right time of day. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. important, yes, yep. sir. And we're not leaving till dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't think you'll be able to, but uh, <laughs> I've got to ask, too, uh, miles per gallon driving this big rig, are you able to share uh, what kind yeah. of FPG you're getting? Yep. I think on average, Average uh, coming down from Michigan through the mountains and driving 70, 68, 72. We're going to be in the mid to high sevens. Like going out to South Dakota, you can run 70, 72 and get a tick above eight miles a gallon. And that's with the DD16. What my friends tell me with the DD13, they'll get another half mile a gallon or so better. Seven and a half to eight and a half, depending on what motor you have and what the train's like, is what I think an honest answer is. And then the Allison doesn't get quite as good as a 12 speed, too. So that's hurting me a little bit. Oh, you learn something new every yeah. day. I didn't know that. Yeah. The new motors, that's one thing. I mean, the missions are something we all don't really want to talk about, but they, they get better mileage than the older trucks do by far. Really? You know, that's in interesting. Truck sales world, the old C15 Cat, you know, would get four and a half to five and a half miles a gallon. 
Oh, yeah, it sounded really good. Yeah, it did. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm curious, uh, going into the back of the coach here, we had the full bathroom in the middle of the coach. Is mm -hmm. there still a, a second shower here in the back? It sure is. Yep. That's a lot bigger yep. shower. So I got to try this out for size. I yeah. love all that indirect lighting there and the, the rounded sink. There's still plenty of, of room in your shower. Beautiful tile work that they do. I'm really impressed with Renegade here. So when you order your coach, there's lots of options. One of the new options is this, which your TV can swing out so you can actually get to your closet. Because of the closet being all the way across in an XL, this was a bit of a wasted space. So the guys at Double L built our shelves to our specs. They'll do a lot of different things for you. This is called the Casper closet because friends of ours had it done first and now everybody wants one. Renegade adopted the door right. and then the shelves you would have to add right. yourself. There's plenty of storage. We had some pullouts made for ours instead of just having empty space in there. So you've got a lot of room so when you're traveling you can take all your essentials from home and have your home away from home with you at all times very clever design and do you know what year they started adding that door 24 I believe. yeah so 24 either late 23 or 24 and they their model years change like just like the auto industry a little early but it's, it's been very recent, just after our 22. Okay. So we this had is to a, add that ourselves. Okay, this is a 22. Okay. Yeah, so we, we took it back to Double L, and they did this for us, and they did our Jumped extra right things. on board, you know, and knew it was such a popular retrofit that people were doing that they added it as standard now. Yeah, very clever mm -hmm. use of that space. Yeah, it is. And especially we have friends that are full-time. Yeah. So they need to use every inch they can. So Probably been talked to death in the renegade world, but there's 150 gallons of fresh water under the bed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. and then 75 and 75 in the gray and black. That's really big holding tanks. Yeah. And then what's your fuel tank capacity? Uh, 120. Okay. And then I believe it's like 13 or 15 gallons of death. This and, is and, neat. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So they made it on all of the air conditioners. So you don't see the ugly air conditioner just gives a little more it bling. down a little bit too then easy access when you need to change yeah. the filter yeah Ooh, very nice now i know you guys are ready to go enjoy the beautiful beach today but i got one more question i want to ask you if you have any advice for someone that's thinking about purchasing an rv or getting into rv is there anything you could share with your 30 years of wisdom yeah i think i would start out small and make sure it's going to work for you because um as i mentioned earlier i feel that a lot of motorhomes and even bumper poles depreciate pretty fast so make sure you're going to like it make sure you realize how much work it is on your wife even i have a hard time understanding with a motorhome it's like everything we need here you just get in and go well it isn't that easy so i think you have to understand you know your spouse's opinion on it for, for me being a woman you have to make sure that you can fit what you need in here it depends on how long you're going to be gone if you see somebody at a campground that has something that's unique go ask them hey let me look in there is it something that we would want to do how often do you use it ask questions before you buy something and make a mistake for us We've had quite a few different options. And I think is what you hear us both saying, it's a commitment. The more you have, the more work there is to do, you know, take care of it and where you're going to store it, how you're going to wash it, you know, how you're going to maintain it, insurance, you know, just tires get old. That's something, you know, that you talk about, I believe too, you know, there's a safety point where you just got to get new tires because they're old. There's expenses to it. If it was easy, everybody would yeah. do it. But if you want to be the coolest kids at the <laughs> beach, I think a lot of people would love to be your friends today and uh, come <laughs> hang out in here when yeah. it comes around lunchtime yep. here in a little bit. I really appreciate you taking the time to share all of this great information with myself and the folks out on YouTube. Been a fun time, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, yep. I hope, hope you uh, enjoy your day out yeah. on the beach and yep. really appreciate all of you out there subscribing to the channel and yes. liking these videos. We hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. Thank you.